Okay, this is an important video. That is in this problem, there's a few takeaways. So let's see what we got here. One over two to the n power is less than 0 0.001. So it's good to get, first off, to get these guys on the even playing field because in a sense you're comparing apples and oranges in a way, meaning that you're dealing with fractions and here you're dealing with decimals. So let's change the right hand side here into a fraction so it will be easier to evaluate the two sides. Now, how do I know that this is one in a thousand? Well. If it were 0.1, it would be 1 in 10. If it were 0.01, it would be 1 in 100. So decimal is moved over there three times. So this is 1 in 1,000. And now we can rewrite this, 1 to 2 over n. Now, of course, you don't want to solve for n and try to multiply both sides by this and that. You'll be here forever. What you do want to know, you want to know your powers of 2. Very important. I'm going to skip 2 to the first, 2 to the second, 2 to the third. Not too relevant here, but let's start with 2 to the fifth. This is equal to 32. You should definitely know this. Now. Another thing you should know is if I multiply 2 to the 5th and I multiply this times 2, or another way of writing it would be 2 to the 5th, there, so you have an exponent to the x point, this would equal 2 to the 10th, or 32 times 32, which is the same as 32 squared, which is 1,024. Very common number, you see. They, they figure this in the problem somehow. They managed to put it there, and here's no difference. So we know that 2 to the 10th, so if n is equal to 10 here, we're going to get 1 over 1,024. And that's really helpful to know because you can say, oh, well, that's less than 1 in 1,000. And why? Well, if this denominator is greater than this denominator, it is less. So we know that column A is less than column B if this were a quantitative comparison, which of course it's not. But the idea here is if this number is bigger than the denominator, that's the answer. Now let's go back to the question. It says, what is the least integer n so that this holds true? Well. We put in 10 and it works. It does hold true. So there's no need to put in 11 or 500. I mean, all of those would work. Sure, it would definitely be lower this side because the side, the denominator would keep getting bigger and bigger. But when we plug in 10, 10 here, it's already bigger in terms of denominator, therefore smaller. And so it answers the question, which is 10. Now, had you not known 2 to the 10th is 1,024, then you probably should have plugged in. Again, it would have been a bit laborious. You would have obviously skipped C, which is 500, because you'd be plugging into well long after your GRE is over, ditto 501. And because it's some definite number that fits in there probably just by looking at it, you know it's probably not going to be E. So your best bet then is to plug in either, either A or B, because we're dealing with big numbers. Choose the smaller, which would be 10. And then you could say, well, what does 2 to the 10 equal? So there's a is 10. We'd plug it back into, oops, there's my n. And then you would work the math out. But from now on, 2 to the 10th is 1,024. And hopefully that'll help you out test day.